are again, one stage at a time. I'm Andy Prim. I'm Aaron Neeson. And joining us again is our friend Jay. Welcome back, Jay. Glad to be back. Jay Sala, sir, in the studio. In the hizzy, yes. <laughs> well, uh, folks, this is uh, one stage at a time. We are playing through the original Super Mario Brothers for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, each episode of this show is one stage from the game, and today we are talking about World 3 4. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. It's been looming on the horizon. So but here we are. Here we are. This is the ultimate stage of World 3. And uh, we're returning once more to the castle-style levels. Uh, my friends, Aaron and Jay, what did you all think of this stage? I'm going to let Jay go first here. Uh, I have a tally for Jay. Um, six. Six Six what, Jay? Six attempts? Yeah, six deaths. That's right. Six attempts, Jay, Jay had six level? deaths. And, and what, did you, what did you feel? What did you feel as that was happening? Regret. <laughs> Regret for coming on this podcast or betrayal. Bet- betrayal. <laughs> I trusted the wrong people. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. Let that be a lesson, Jay. Never trust anyone. <laughs> My publicist is gonna kill me if this gets out. <laughs> but at the end, ultimately I did defeat Bowser. You did. We did make it to the fourth world. So. Indeed, indeed. You yeah. jumped over him and you hit that axe and uh he, he fell. Yep. That's right. Yeah, we we were proud of you and impressed. And uh, yeah, in the end, Koopa went down. King Koopa fell, but did he? But did he? But did he? No, we know. No, we he know. Didn't. He it did was not. it was another imposter. It was it was another imposter, <laughs> and I saw his true face. And uh, what was that true face, Aaron? <laughs> it was one of those weird. I don't know what they're called. Those weird little like uh, those weird little indestructible black shelled uh underground dwelling ooh, guys ooh, I, this, this is a good maybe a lore corner type question uh, yeah i know what their proper name is of course jay, you do jay do you know what this creature's proper name is did you were, you were paying attention when i when i fireballed bowser to death i don't think i was but i know <laughs> i i don't know the name of the creature all right well i i will then share it with you the name of this creature is buzzy beetle buzzy beetle Beetle? That's right, folks. It's called the Buzzy Beetle. And uh, according to the instruction manual for this game, Buzzy Beetle is, uh, it's very short. It just says, quite the toughy, fireballs won't even face him. <laughs> is it even it. possible to kill without a without a Starman in this game? Though? No, no. A Starman or kick him into a pit. That's the only way. You can kick him into a pit? Sure. Yeah, if there's a pit nearby. Okay. Yeah. So you, you can jump on him like a Koopa. Right. And he'll, will he flip upside down? Well, Koopas don't flip upside down. He just goes into his shell like a Koopa does. Okay, so him. he behaves like a Koopa, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, more or less, yeah. He's just invincible for, uh, you know, as compared to a Koopa. Okay, right on. Right on. Yeah. yeah. That's what Bowser was. It was an enchanted uh, Buzzy Beetle. That's right. Yeah, it was an enchanted Buzzy Beetle. We'll see him for real later on, um, but for, for this stage, it's interesting that this is the first. Um, this yeah. is the first appearance of the Buzzy Beetle, but you would only see it if you defeat Bowser with fireballs. Now, it, for those of you tuning in for maybe the first time, um, Bowser, the Why? king of the Koopas, appears at the end of uh, every world, at the end of the castle stage. This is the third castle, world 3-4. And um, Bowser, you can either move past him, jump over him, or run under him and grab the axe at the end of the bridge and thereby dump him into the lake of fire. Or you can, if you reach him with fireballs, which is pretty difficult to do, uh, five fireballs will take him out and he will transform into uh, whatever creature um, he really is because these Bowsers are all imposters. The real Bowser has used his dark sorcery to make one of his minions into a beautiful, a fake. beautiful sorcery. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Because because you think Bowser is the hero of this game. He is the hero. What do you mean? <laughs> we we're playing the villain. We're 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 doing the we're doing the whole like the anti-hero sort of thing <laughs> here, where we play as we're, we play as the villain. It's like God of War. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly like God of War. Well, at any rate, five fireballs will defeat this imposter and show his true form, which is the Buzzy Beetle. Yep, and I was surprised to see it because, you know, before it was a Goomba, and then it was a Koopa, and you know, you would have expected it to be something an enemy you've at least encountered before, uh, yeah, a, a, a Hammer Bro, maybe I don't know, maybe yeah, <laughs> a Cheap Cheap, Cheap or Cheap something. or a Blooper, yeah, but nope, it was something that we've never seen before, and yeah. if, you know, I, I, you know, maybe it goes in terms of like rank, 
rank within like the the Koopa Troop. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, but like you know, it, I, I'd seen the enemy before because I've played a bunch of Mario games before. But if you had never played them before and you were playing this for the first time and you killed it with fireballs and all of a sudden there's this weird thing that shows up and you're just like. Ah. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> well, we'll get Jay gave his thoughts. Um, so in general, Jay, do you think this is a pretty uh, like a good level for Super Mario Brothers? Are you indifferent about it? What do you think? It's a very good level. It's more difficult, but just because it's tough for some doesn't mean that's any less of a level. You just have to level up your own game playing. Aaron though made slight work of it. He really didn't have much of a challenge. I don't know why. I don't know why because but this level for some reason just uh suited me i don't know if it was because i would assume it's because of the timing of everything in the level it suited my sonic style of playing where i just sort of like rushed through everything and (laughs) rushing and jumping worked out yeah rushing and jumping worked out for me um (laughs) it does it it surprisingly does it really does in this one like i i did it one time and i beat the level and i and it it was fine and i was like in, in my head i was like that was a fluke (laughs) <laughs> that was a thing. It's not gonna happen again. And then after Jay had his turn, I did it again. I did it again, and I, I this had the same result. And I was like, "All right, all right, cool, cool. That worked out well. Ru- just rushing through and jumping at the right intervals worked out just fine." Um, so part of it's definitely Sonic. Part of it's probably Rayman. Recently, oh yeah, you've been playing a lot of Rayman Legends, right? I played a lot of Rayman Legends. It was it was a couple of years ago at this point. Ray- um, Rayman Legends is pretty good, huh? Rayman Legends is a great game. Anybody who has a chance to play it, it's worth the money. It's there's a ton of levels, a ton of a ton of different things you can unlock. It's it's a fantastic game, worth every penny, and it's it's probably not even it's it's not even a sixty dollar game. It's just worth I'm it. sure it's discounted. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I know it's on the Switch, and Ubisoft is doing sales. Yeah, all the I played time, it on the so. Vita. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the poor little. You, Vita. You're like the only person in the continental U.S. that well, played it on the Vita. That's not true. I there there are dozens of us. Dozens, <laughs> <laughs> literally dozens. A community. <laughs> no, I don't mean to knock the Vita as a system. It was a great it's... system. It just did not have the support it needed. Yeah, that's true. Um, it, it doesn't hold a candle to the Switch. The Switch is amazing. <laughs> oh, the Switch is my baby. I love it. I love my Switch. Uh, and, um, is it I, your guys I don't favorite th- uh, console, Nintendo console they've had with the Switch? Uh, I don't know if it has surpassed my love for the N64 yet. And, and for me, the, the, the Super Game NES is, is like unstoppable. Yeah. But, but the Switch is, uh, for this generation, definitely my favorite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, it really like up there in the conversation of like most important console. Yeah. It kind of yeah. seems fun. Like not mes- necessarily like changing the dynamics of the graphics or anything. It just seems. Oh no, fun. no, it's not graphically revolutionary or anything. Like the graphics are, they, 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 they're last gen. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, more or less. But like at this point, in terms of graphics and games, like the uh, the difference between generations is getting a lot slighter it's than it slimmer was. And slimmer, yeah. Yeah, between like you know NES and SNES, or uh, between SNES mm-hmm. and N sixty four, the jumps were incredible. Nowadays, the jumps are getting maybe more incremental. Yeah, because there's going to be a certain point where the the Uncanny Valley tips, and it's not in the Uncanny Valley anymore. But until that happens, it's still going to be like, you know, uh, it's not going to be as, 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 you know. You know, <laughs> for sure, yeah. And, but but and not, N- Nintendo's strength is they never go for realism. I mm-hmm. think that's uh, a trap that basically every modern AAA game falls into. Is there's no graphical style. It's just they're going for as realistic as possible. Which is which isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Like I look at I look at yeah, but if Last look of at, Us two, and I'm like, whoa. Right, Whoa. but it, but if you compare the human characters from Last of Us to, let's say, Mass Effect or Assassin's Creed or Call of Duty, they look the exact same. There's no oh, differentiation in the art why? style. Oh, the human characters. I mean, like the models of the humans. Yeah. it's the same style. It, there's no differentiation. Uh, the other stuff is different, like maybe the aliens and like the mm-hmm. costumes and stuff. But like the models of the faces are are basically the same. We're gonna have to disagree about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we just start. and you know, it, it, I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to poo-poo your opinion. I, I really am not because it really is a matter of opinion because it's all perception. But at the same time, like I look at, I look at things like God of War on on PlayStation. Well, God of War is doing more of an artistic thing than most games, I would say. 
I mean, sure, there's artistry to it. There's more the style time, to it. Sure, but at the same time, the, 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 the character models are very, very realistic. And gear, and, 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 and God of War, <laughs> they're realistic. I'm not in the sure. The newest one, yeah. They're, uh, well, in the newer one, that's true. That's but, what I'm talking about. The yeah. most recent iteration. I'm but, not but talking you're still, about. You're still talking about, like, fantasy creatures in God of War. That That's definitely more of, like, a fantastic art style than a lot of the more, like, well, realistic uh, games. Listen, when, I, when I'm talking about realism, I, I'm speaking more or more, much more about human features and characteristics because that's the standard yeah. it really is because i mean like you can make all you can make whatever appear in wherever <laughs> and you can make this giant bird appear and it looks realistic it's got flowy wings and it's got glowy particles and whatever but the thing that the human eye is really going to discern is humans human faces much more particularly and, yeah and in, in that and, regard and, and that's that's really what i'm talking about like if you compare for example like the latest fifa game with and the humans i mean the human face models in the latest fifa game with the human face models from like you know like the last of us 2 or like the newest dark souls game like they're 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 not doing it anything significantly different in but terms which of ones like are on, which art ones design. are on switch None of those games, right? Are on exactly. That's what I'm saying. But, but what I'm saying is that <laughs> is that Nintendo specifically doesn't do that. They they go for a more stylized, almost cartoonish art design. Yes, like they're they're not falling into that trap of trying to make everything realistic. Right, but they still do have kind of they still do effort. have games that have realistic elements, like Skyrim, like uh, e- even Doom. Uh, you know, it it had realistic elements, like it's supposed to be a realistic world. But they're working on last, they're functioning on last gen graphics, which is fine. It's not a bad thing, right? Yeah. Well, what I mean, what I'm saying is like and those are those are ports, and it's nice to see that third party support. But like the Nintendo first party games are what drive the system. Sure. And, sure. and they're not doing that. They're mostly sure. doing a more no. cartoony thing. Yes. And I would never. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that Nintendo's <laughs> going for realism ever. I would never, ever, 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 ever say that because <laughs> they're not. But they're not, and that's that's a smart move, in yeah. my opinion. So, but they're not trying to compete in the uh, in the in the in the in the high end graphics, realistic graphics marketplace, which is smart because they can't. Um, <laughs> well, they choose not to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They choose not to. They they choose to go with they choose to go with graphics and a and a platform that can't compete, and that's fine because they're doing something else <laughs> but at the same time they are They're a toy company yeah but but at the same time they are squeezing every last drop of graphical power out of that system and doing amazing things with it because yeah doom is a current gen game it's a current gen game it, yeah it's on xbox one it's on ps4 mm-hmm. and it runs great and it looks great and yeah, it they looks, got that new wolfenstein yeah on they the got Switch. the new wolfenstein yeah, and those the, are, those the are next gets. doom is coming out on it and i'm no nintendo apologist or anything like i i <laughs> I, I, I i miss current gen games on my switch because i that's the game that's my gaming platform is switch me too i don't, yeah. I don't have an xbox one i don't have a ps4 i don't Same. have a pc yeah. my gaming console is the switch i miss current gen stuff on the switch well I'm, but uh, oh, go ahead i don't mind but I don't mind. Yeah. Really. Because I, I love the portability of the Switch. I love being able to take it with me and and on my breaks at work, being able to play it and then bring it home and continue the game I was playing on my TV. It's awesome. It's awesome. And I love it. Uh, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm, I'm kind of a Nintendork. Uh, Nintendo has always been my console and, <laughs> and software developer of choice for a lot of reasons. Yeah, I mean, part of that is like what you were saying about like they're not competing for like the highest level graphics. They never have. Even when the NES, the Famicom came out, it wasn't really competing to be like the most powerful console in the market. They were specifically not doing that. They were cutting out a lot of stuff that other manufacturers were doing. They didn't have a disk drive, for example, which a lot of other consoles at the time did. Did Um, they? Some consoles did, yeah. And really? a lot, some consoles had like keyboard support and things like that. Mm, Nintendo yeah. cut all that stuff out. They stripped it down and basically made a toy. Um, and we'll get into more of the development of that when we get there in, in terms of like our, our history segments. But uh, Gunpei Yokoi has a quote that uh, is translated something like this, which is um, their, their philosophy was mature, proven technology um, that is pushed to the limit. 
So they weren't interested in doing cutting edge, untested things. They wanted technology that was proven that they could really play with and push as far as it would go. And what, that's that's what, what they've done. But what could they do if they did push it? If they did take the cutting edge stuff and 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 played with it, they could they could revolutionize things. Well, they'd probably be more like Sony, um, which is you know it is what it is. Well, is it, wait, hang on, hang on, just a sec, hang on, just a sec. Isn't Gunpai a little bit of a hypocrite then? Because he made the Virtual Boy. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. He didn't, <laughs> well, and I mean, he didn't follow his own advice in that case. And, yeah. And and it sort of backfired on him. So when did that quote come? Was it before or after the Virtual Boy? Th- this would be much earlier. Yeah. This was like mm. early. Early on, and and like uh, early '90s, probably is when he said that. I don't really know for sure. I'm taking this is something that's quoted a lot, but David Sheff quotes it in his book Game Over, which came out in the early '90s. So yeah, this was a long time ago, and Mr. Yokoi would have said that. Okay, okay. I was just curious if he he adopted that principle after his after the Virtual Boys. Uh, significant failure. <laughs> <laughs> now, this probably went as far back as like the the Game and Watch, which was using that same kind of philosophy of mature and proven technology. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, so we're talking about we've we've gotten a little bit far afield, but we're talking about um, World Three Dash Four of uh, Super Mario Brothers, and uh, it sounds like Jay and Aaron, you both like this stage. Is that fair to say? It's very fair. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I really liked this level. It was, it was, it was exciting for me personally. Again, we we talked about this. It wasn't particularly challenging. I found a, I found a, I found a groove. Yeah, and rocked it. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't really find that groove. Yeah, Jay had a little <laughs> bit more trouble. It does kind of encourage you to just barrel forward and and not not stop. You, I, I don't know if it encourages you, but that's what I did, and it worked. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you can kind of fall into that flow state of just playing and not thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and it, yeah. One thing that I think is cool is there's a lot of timed elements. Yes. There's the uh, the fire bars that are both – there's several sets where there's one at the top and one at the bottom of the screen. And they kind of spin in tandem and you have to jump between them at the right time. And what I like is that the first two sets are spinning uh, like uh, away from Mario – Yes, um, but the last set is spinning towards Mario, so yes. it it screws you up, and your timing is a little more precise. Well, uh, all right, I, I got some quick stats for y'all. Hit me with them stats. It's it's <laughs> gonna be another short one. Five coins in this level. Sounds about right. One yeah. power up. Hmm. We've got zero starmen. We've got zero one ups, and we've got zero secrets. Um, that's it. Zero secrets. Yeah, the castles don't really have secrets. Right. Nor do the athletic well, stages. They're so that's so different from later castles. It really like in, is in the series, yeah. not in this game, but in the series. Like and uh, there are lots of secrets in Super Mario World in the castles. There are, and I should say when I say secrets, what I mean is like secret like pipes or yeah. vines that lead to like secret areas. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I understand, listener. Do you understand? Do you understand, listener? <laughs> do you? Do, do you? Do you? Do you? See? <laughs> <laughs> Did you go red dragon on us? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> this Do is you Koopa. See this? this is Koopa transformed. Do you see? <laughs> so Koopa is Francis Dollarhide. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I want to see that movie now. It's a good movie. Like it's it's who who is it? McG or something? Is it uh No, McG? it's Brett Ratner. Oh, okay. It's Brett Ratner. But, but Ray Fines plays Dollarhide, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, Ray Fines. Yeah, he's yeah. great. And Edward Norton is the uh the police officer yeah. or FBI agent or whatever yeah. he is. Yeah. It's a good movie. It is. It's is a very good movie. Like, yeah. I'm surprised by how good it is considering now, how it's uh, Brett Ratner. Now I'm picturing Bowser, like, breaking into an art museum oh, no. and finding, like, an original painting of himself <laughs> and just <laughs> eating it, <laughs> consuming it so he can be the red dragon. The green dragon, I He's guess. He's already the red dragon. No. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's go to the lore corner. Y'all ready for some lore corner? Hit me with that lower corner. Okay. Jay, you ready? I'm ready. You this ready? Born ready. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. You sure about that? I think I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> He's ready. I'm ready. Uh, this lower corner will take the form of a question. How many children does Bowser have? I know this. Jay, do you have, do you have a guess? I almost want to say seven. All right. Jay says seven. I say eight. Aaron says eight. Well, you're both wrong. The correct answer is one. Bowser has Bowser one Jr. child, and it is Bowser is his Jr. Kid. That's right. Okay. Uh, 
Now, th- this is one The other that's, ones are the Koopalings. That's right. Yep. Aaron, Aaron said it. Uh, I'm so mad at myself. Uh, <laughs> this, this is a tricky one because in the instruction manual for Super Mario Brothers 3, in the US at least, um, the Koopalings were described as Bowser's children. In Japan, that maybe wasn't the case. Um, and recently, you know, Miyamoto has made statements saying that, nope, the Koopalings are maybe related somehow or they're part of the Koopa Troop. But uh, they are not Bowser's children. His only canonical child is Bowser Jr. Who is Peach's son. <laughs> so, yeah, he's, Bowser Jr. is the child of Peach and Bowser. <laughs> Just saying. He says it. No one ever contradicts it. While we're on the subject, do you know the names of the Koopalings? Well, they're all composers. I know that. There's Lemmy. There's Ludwig. There's... Ludwig, there's Johan. <laughs> Johan. <laughs> Johan is not one of the Koopalings. Uh, uh, they're all in. They're all in Mario Kart. I can't remember their names. Uh, yeah, they all are in the new Mario Kart. Uh, there's um. God. Man, seriously, guys, only two of seven. Well, come, like, man, you're putting me on a pressure, and you've got and, Lemmy and Ludwig. Yeah, there's Lemmy Ludwig. There's um. Oh my goodness, this is gonna. It's going to bother me so much because I know that <laughs> I'm loving watching these guys struggle no, right now trying to come up with these this names. Makes me so mad because I played all of them. Um, let me Ludwig. There's Ziggy. There's no Ziggy. <laughs> <laughs> Ziggy. Ziggy played guitar. <laughs> oh. All right. You want me to put you out of your misery? No, because I feel like I should know them. You, and sh- you should know them. I should know them because I've played Mario Kart a bunch. And I've played all of them to try and find... I, I, I want to find the best, my best racer. And I tried them all. And I'm very, very, very frustrated <laughs> that I can't think of their names. Jay, you got anything on this one? I do not. Jay is stumped. You, you're like the Super Mario World Master too, right? You've yeah. beaten you, them you've all. You've fought these guys numerous times, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, I just try to beat them. I don't care what their names are generally, but that's oh, a good question. That makes sense because you're a speed gamer, so I'm you're speed. yeah, you're just like mash and start <laughs> through all this stuff. But it's a good question. All right, Aaron. Yeah, just 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 put me out of my misery because right. I am I am miserable. <laughs> so we've got uh, uh, you said uh, what were the two you said? Larry and Ludwig. Lemmy. Lemmy. Okay, so we've got Lemmy, Ludwig, Larry, Iggy. Morton, Roy, and Wendy. Roy, Wendy. That's right. uh, Morton, I should note, he's his name is given as Morton Koopa Jr. So uh, a lot of people for a while thought that Bowser's first name might be Morton. Um, Of course, though, I if I say of course, this is something probably people won't really be aware of today. But Morton Koopa Jr. is a reference to a TV show host called Morton Downey Jr. I don't know. Have you all ever heard of Morton Downey Jr.? Nope. His, our parents probably would know who he is, but he was uh, like a kind of like a Maury Povich or like a Jerry Springer type figure on like... <laughs> really? Ta- he was like a talk show host and his shows always got really contentious. Like people would like... There would be fist fights and things being thrown around the stage. <laughs> but that's who... Uh, I'm pretty sure that's who Morton Koopa Jr. is named after. But... Those are, the, those are the Koopalings, um, cool. who I think are great characters, but they're not appearing in this game. They won't show up till later. But that has been your lore corner for today. <sighs> that was nice. That was a brutal one. I certainly enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> bit frustrating for me. But say la vie. Say la vie. Say la vie. I'll, maybe I'll ask you that same Ooh, question again oh, in a future oh, episode oh, and see if you've uh, have a tattoo figured out the arm. answer or not. Uh, listeners at home, I hope you knew the answer to that question. And also, listeners at home, I hope that you're playing along with us as we go through this journey. Um, We hope that you will share your thoughts with us. Um, Next up, 4-1. Go play it. Go play it. Play it. And and please let us know, like, how you like these levels. I mean, I said that 3-1 was my favorite. Uh, Aaron and Jay preferred 3-3 as far as World 3 goes. But, yeah, let us know. Do you have a favorite stage in this game or in World 3? We would love to hear from you. Who's your favorite Koopaling? Who's your favorite Koopaling? Who's your favorite Koopaling? My Mm. favorite's the one with the mohawk. Uh, there's several with mohawks. <laughs> Just about all of them, really. Colorful mohawk. Uh, I, I think I might say Wendy. I like Wendy. Jay, who's your favorite coupling? Wendy. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Well, 
Well, boys, it's been a long, strange journey through World 3. Jay, I want to thank you for joining us for this journey. My pleasure as always. Indeed, sir. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Come back someday? Of course. Maybe? Of course. If we pay you enough? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You pay me in cash, right? <laughs> it's $500. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. money. We'll get right on that. Andy, uh, thank you for being here. Aaron, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, sir. It's my pleasure. It was my pleasure. This was so much fun. (laughs) Well, uh, so we've reached the end of World 3. We'll be back very soon with World 4. Please, you know, uh, follow the show, like and subscribe, leave us a review, and we will see you all very, very soon. And uh, we are signing off. See you next time. Good night. Bye. Good night and good luck.